uh, Brother Kwame. Hello, comrades. Um, we will be Hello. starting. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Hello, comrades. We'll be starting with the statement of unity. All right. Let me get it right here. All right. Uh, preface. The U.S. was founded on a colonial settler state based upon white supremacy and slavery, stealing the lands of the indigenous nations, breaking every treaty made with them, and confining them to quote unquote reservations, concentration camps. As the country became more powerful, the eagle sank its claws in other nations, making war on Mexico and grabbing its northern territory, invading Cuba, Puerto Rico, Hawaii, and the Philippines, and either annexing them and either annexing them outright or making them colonies or neo-colonies. In the 20th century, it became the major imperialist power in the world, exploiting both the people within its, within its boundaries and those in every other country, bullying them with military um, interventions and robbing them of their right to self-determination. As Huey P. Newman stated, we have two enemies to fight, racism and capitalism. Between the two, capitalism is primary. Racism is a byproduct of capitalism. The working class of the world of, of every ethnicity or nationality face a common enemy that is destroying life on earth. Our enemy is a small ruling class of property owners controlling most of the world's wealth and resources. We must have our basic needs met to live a good and meaningful life, which includes food, shelter, health, health care, education, freedom from oppression by the state, and peace with other nations. To obtain these essential, these essential things for life, we must have the power to see to it that the, that the abundance that is available is shared equitably. Statement of Unity of the Second Rainbow Coalition. The legacy of the First Rainbow Coalition dates back to, the found, to, the, to its founding on April 4th, 1969, by the original Black Panther, by the original Black Panther Party, original Young Lords, and Young Patriots organization. A number of other organizations joined this coalition not long afterwards, such as the American Indian Movement, AIM, Brown um, Brown Rising Up Angry, the Red Guards, and others. Since the founding of the United States, the masses had developed a number of popular movements that came together to fight back against the capitalist imperialist system in various in various in various ways around particular demands. Nevertheless, none has established a movement quite like the First Rainbow Coalition. This historic movement was the first of its kind that established a model of class struggle like no other. Its charismatic leader, Chairman Fred Hampton of the Illinois chapter of the original Black Panther Party, said that, the, that at the end of the day, we weren't engaged in a quote unquote race struggle. He said, it's a class struggle, goddammit. By uniting with the, the various ethnic communities that white supremacy had long sought to keep divided, this class um, saw they equipped them with the material basis and class consciousness to see their common class condition. Therefore, the necessity to form a united front against the common class oppressor, the capitalist imperialist ruling class. This ruling class viewed this as the greatest threat to their class rule and subsequently used the entire oppressive forces of the state, police, courts, jails, prisons, and intelligence agencies, etc., in order to crush the emerging revolutionary socialist movement. We refounded the Rainbow Coalition on May 14, 2021, with the intent of upholding the legacy of the original Rainbow Coalition. We believe that this historic example is the model of is the model of um, is the model for the United Front that will best serve our class liberation by upholding the ten point program of the original Black Panther Party, which was subsequently adapted and later expanded by the um, by the original Young Lords, Young Patriots organization, and all other original Rainbow Coalition members. We establish our pragmatic unity. The six disciplinary rules that we uphold ties all organizations in our coalition to common prof professional discipline. History has bestowed upon our generation a common class mission to fulfill. The re representatives 
of the capitalist imperialist ruling class represented by the Democratic Party and the Republican Party cannot liberate us. It is their class intention and interest to uphold our common class oppression. Therefore, it is only we, the oppressed masses of all ethnicities and nationalities, who must build the necessary class solidarity, class consciousness, organizational structures, and a united front that will ultimately liberate ourselves. This is what this second rainbow coalition is committed to. This is the historic mission we intend to fulfill. Dare to struggle, dare to win. All members of the coalition, New African Black Panther Party, White Panther Party, Green Party of New Jersey, Poor People's Army, La Massa Nationale de Brown Barrettes, um, Fury, Feminist, upri um, feminist Uprising to Resist um, Inequality and Exploitation, NASO, North Alabama School for Organizers, New Era and New Era Young Lords. The six disciplinary rules. Number one, members will conduct themselves in a manner that, that in a manner to bring credit to the coalition and will treat others with respect and politeness. Number two, members will be uh, will be sober when on rainbow coalition business and will not engage in any criminal activity while a member. Number three, no member will engage in violence except in the extremity of self-defense. Number four, members will not gossip nor be divisive to the unity of the Second Rainbow Coalition. Number five, members will not act as informers nor work against the purpose of the Second Rainbow Coalition. And number six, nobody is authorized to speak for the Second Rainbow Coalition unless authorized to do so. And oh, um, there are also other parties. Um, within the Rainbow Coalition as well that I didn't see. Guardian, um, Rebellion, and American Indian, and American Indian Movement, um, N.E. Woodland Chapter, August 21st, 2021. And that is the Statement of Beauty. All right, thank you. Thank you for uh, reading that Statement of Unity. And... Um, I'll briefly I'm just give an outline. Also, I also I accidentally said Brett. <laughs> well, oh no, I just said I accidentally said Brett. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's we understood exactly what you meant. La Mesa Nacional and Brown Berets, um, mm -hmm. uh, But if you're finished reading, uh, I can continue on. Mm -hmm. Sorry, comrade. Oh, so I just want to give an outline of Chapter Twelve to, today. If no one has um, had the time to take in to reading it, and I'll I'll be brief and I'll try to hurry up through it so we can get on with the reading. And um, so, the Ojibwe Warrior by Dennis Banks. Um, one is the time or the title Wounded Knee. The siege begins. And the introduction is overview overview of events, leaderships to the siege. Tensions building on Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota in the early 1970s. Reservation controlled by tribal member or chairman Richard Wilson. Wilson seen as a corrupt and authoritarian, which is the whole reason why Pine Ridge reached out to aim to a system and uh, the conflicts that were going on and the uprising that was going on due to Wilson, right? So Wilson formed private public, a police force called Guardians of the Original Nation, which we they considered the Goon Squad. Goons notorious for violence and intimidation tactics. Banks and other activists organized against Wilson and Goons Description of the initial stages of the siege, banks and a group of about 200 activists, mostly from American Indian Movement, aim drive to Wounded Knee. Wounded Knee held symbolic significance and is a site of the 1890s massacre of hundreds of Lakota Sioux. Group intended to occupy village and draw attention to plight of American Indians in the U.S. Tense situation on Pine Ridge Reservation. 
Tribal Chairman Richard Wilson's corruption and author authoritarianism. Wilson accused of embezzlement and other abuses of power. Wilson's critics often targeted by goons. Formation of private police force called the Guardians of the Oglala Nation goons. Goons recruited from local Native American population. Goons accused of multiple human rights violations. Activists against Wilson and the goons. Banks and the other activists organized protests and demonstrations. Activists demanded investigation into Wilson's activities. Occupation of Wounded Knee, symbolic significance of Wounded Knee, site of the 1890 massacre of hundreds of Lakota Sioux men, women, and children, symbol of US government's mistreatment of American Indians, intentions to draw attention to the plight of American Indians in the US. Activists hope occupation would bring national attention to issues facing Native Americans. Activists demanded recognition of treaty rights and sovereignty. Siege of Wounded Knee, federal marshals and FBI agents surrounded the village. Law enforcement agencies responded with force to occupation. Block all communication and supply lines to Wounded Knee. Cut off all communication and supply lines. Occupiers apply, uh, unable to communicate with the outside world. Food and other supplies became scarce. Tense standoff between occupiers and law enforcement. Occupational gunfire exchange between two sides. Negotiations and attempts at resolution interspeared with violence. Internal conflicts within the occup occupation. Different factions within AIM and other groups trying to control and influence. Leadership struggles between banks and other AIM leaders. Tensions between local Native American population and AIM activists from outside the area. Emphasis on nonviolent tactics and the need to maintain discipline and focus. Banks and other AIM leaders stress importance and peaceful protest. And that's just uh, the, the format to what we're gonna be reading tonight. And let me pull up to it. Unless somebody has it already, would somebody like to continue read or, or, or start with reading chapter 12? Um, I don't have it pulled up, but I wouldn't mind um, reading the chapter um, if no one else, um, if that's okay with everyone. Okay, thank you. And if somebody has it pulled up while you get started, maybe they can read a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, comrade Shamako, um, um, if it's, um, if it's, a, or, or anyone else, either comrade Shamako or, or, or anyone, um, if anyone, because I don't think I can do it, um, because I'm not the host, so I'm not sure, but if anyone can pull up the, um, the, um, the, um, the chapter by, by screen sharing, um, that 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 would be good so that um so that way um so that way people can follow along with what's being read unless I can do it because let me actually see what chapter are we on again comrades twelve chapter twelve gotcha uh -huh. chapter twelve let me see. And my apologies because I'm not used to um, being the sole host on it. Um, Don't worry, comrade. I was, I was reading the beginning of it. 
Wait, sorry, I'm not. I haven't pulled up to the chapter yet. My apologies. I'm trying to find it. All right, here we go. Chapter twelve. I just found it. So um, I'm mm -hmm. gonna try. I'm gonna try screen sharing and um, tell me if any of y'all can see my screen. I'm gonna do it right now. Uh, screen start. So can anyone see this? Uh, yes, it's visible to myself. Is it anyone else? Yeah, so I can see it. Nice, 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 nice. So it appears like it appears like I'll be able to read this. So um, if if everyone um, if everyone's ready, I'll begin reading chapter twelve. Okay. Thank you. Chapter twelve: the town with the gun smoke flavor. You're seeing that we have a group of eight of aimers here and a group and a group of my supporters here they're going to clash one of these days and it's probably pretty soon and that scene is going to be the end of my supporters or the end of the american indian movement one or the other dick wilson tribal chairman pine ridge reservation after the BIA takeover, our attention turned to South Dakota, the state we felt was the most racist towards Indians. Pine Ridge Reservation, home to some 12,000 Oglala, I believe I'm saying that right, Oglala Soy Indians. Sue. Was a, sorry, Soy. Oglala no, Sioux no. Indians. Yeah. Oglala Sioux Indians were, um, was a scandalous exhibit of economic racism. In early 1973, Pine Ridge was a scene of desolation. Most people lived in, in tar paper shacks without running water, electricity, or indoor plumbing. Some lived in, in small ancient log cabins with dirt floors. One family's home, quote unquote, was a tiny ramshack, was a tiny ramshackle 1920s trailer. Its owner, with typical Glaga humor, told him his floor space was the size of a quote-unquote white man's throw rug. <laughs> At least three quarters of the people were um, in desperate need to, of decent housing. The average yearly income of the res was, one, was $1,500. Fucking hell. Shannon County... Which, which the reservation is part of, was then and is to this day the poorest of all the more than 3,000 counties in America. At the time of the res, about 70% of the working age people were unemployed. The res had no bank, no general store, no movie theater, no hotel or motel. It had, however, a brand new air, air, air um um, airstrip long enough to accommodate jet planes. Unfortunately, no one on the res owned a plane and no airline serviced this area. The BIA maintained that it had not financed, financed this tribal asset, quote unquote. The airstrip uh, had been contracted by, by the tribal's own po po politicians and paid for by tribal funds which proved to many on the res that not all crooks were white, um, are white. <laughs> um, there was one area of Pine Ridge that the Oglala, that the Oglala with their, with their Hayoka, I believe, I'm, I believe that's the correct way to pronounce it, sense of humor called the Industrial Park. It's its single building was a was a warehouse in which the government stored commodities for welfare for um, for welfare recipients. Without without that food, the people would have starved. A house years old, um, years old, white flour, powdered milk, 
powdered eggs, processed cheese, lard, beans, and other star um, starchy stuff. Pine Ridge was a place of despair. The situation on, on other reservations in South Dakota weren't much better, but not everybody on Pine Ridge was poor. A few very, um, a very few did quite, quite well. Among them was a pudgy, short-haired mixed blood named Vicki Wilson, Pine Ridge's tribal president. Wilson maintained a private army of about 80, 80 heavy armed thugs paid by government money that was that was meant for other more positive programs. The government even um, even supplied them with ar with armor piercing bullets. Jesus fuck. They did not hesitate to to firebomb, maim, or murder Wilson's opponents. People on the res called these um, these hoodlums the goons. Wilson took pride in in that name. He boasted, "There, there are my goons, G O O N S, guardians of the Oglala Nation." Fucking hell. Reporters, reporters from the Shannon County, um, from the Shannon County News. Um, regularly called Wilson the famous Indian fighter, the Bureau's goofball, um, the, the Bureau's goof, goofball, raised on, on a diet of dumb pills. There were, um, there, uh, but there was nothing funny about Wilson. Under his rule, Pine Ridge was a, was a, was a killing field. Between 1972 and 1976, more than 60 full bloods were killed by the goons. He paid for um, for with federal funds, the U.S. government, the U.S. government um, pumped twenty million dollars into Pine Ridge while Wilson was tribal president. This gave him the power of patronage. He handed out 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 cushy jobs to family members, friends, and supporters. He publicly declared, "There is nothing wrong with nepotism. I take care of my own." Jesus fucking Christ, individualistic shithead, Wilson. Wilson took care of his own, quote unquote, by giving away 80,000 acres of Pine Ridge land to the United States, land that became part of the Badlands National Monument. Land, land is at the very core of the traditional Lakota soul. Many Lakotas have never forgotten nor forgiven Wilson's theft of their sacred Black Hills. In return of Wilson's gift, the government gave Wilson full support against his opponents, among whom were, were his own vice president, Vern Long, his tribal judge, Ho Hobart Keith, and members of OSCRO, the Oglala, um, the Oglala, the Oglala Sioux Civil Rights Organization. Investigations of fraud involving Wilson's election were put on the were put on the back burner. The government also furnished weapons to Wilson's goon squads, ignoring that he used funds in marked for health and education to pay his private army. The the goings on at Pine Ridge were a national scandal. Aided and and abetted by the BIA, Wilson stayed in power by open unabashed election fraud. At last, the the Oglalas began to fight back. They asked AIM for help. As opposition de developed, repression increased. They could feel it coming. The very air trembled with the force of the of the impending explosion. The fuse had been lit. It would take only a time, a short time, until the flame reached the powder. Pine Ridge was a big concern, but it was not our only concern. South Dakota was the most racist state in the in the in the country, and, and Rapid City was the most racist um, town in South Dakota. Rapid City, Rapid for short, is the gateway to the Black Hills. On the east, on the east, the town is flanked by grain um, elevators. Towards the west, towards the west, rise a series of hills, from which a monolithic, from a monolithic um, cement dinosaur overshadows um, the town. In between sprawls the downtown business district with its street full of saloons and shops, western clothing stores, curio shops, jewelry stores featuring "quote unquote" Black Hills gold, pawn shops, and gun shops. In the middle. 
in the middle is the historic Alex Johnson Hotel with its lobby of beamed ceilings covered with Indian designs, a place where wealthy visitors can get a, a gourmet dinner. Rapid City is a tourist center as well as a typical cowboy town. We went to Rapid to do something about discrimination against Indians to encourage local businessmen to hire Indians to get better medical treatment for Indian veterans and to sensitize the white, the white citizen in general. Of special concern was an Indian ghetto called um, Sioux Edition, a kind of Indian um, Soweto. Um, three miles out of town, the Indian people who lived there had come to Rapid seeking work, but went, re but were rejected by white, by the white landlords, and employers, by white est uh, establishment in general. They could not afford Rapid City rent, and soon found themselves on a dead end street with no public services, no schools, nor gar um, no garbage collection, or street lights redlining. The city police and fire depart department ignored Sioux addition as as if it didn't exist. We felt we felt we felt we felt we felt the city owed AIM some consideration in addition to the basic respect to um it owed Indian people in general. We had helped the town at a time when, when Indians and whites um were in need. During June 1972, a great a great flood had had devastated the town. Rapid Creek had ripped right through the center of town, swallowing up houses and killing two hundred two um two hundred and thirty people. Aim jumped right in to help. We worked to recover bodies, find shelters for people who were suddenly homeless, and deliver food supplies and blankets, giving help to all who needed it, Indian and white alike. Our help was not appreciated. This was John Wayne um, country, where an Indian took his life in his own hands if he entered a white bar, and where American Indians were treated like were, were, were treated like black people in apartheid South Africa. When Rapid Creek flooded, a call was sent to all AIM people to come to Rapid to help local Indians reclaim their rights. We all stayed at Mother Butler Center, a two-story building with with a um, dormitory, dormitory. Um, during January 1973, there were about 200 AIM people there, plus many local and reservation Lakotas. The juice, the Juiciet priest Jesuit. in charge. Sorry, what? Jesuit. Jesu Je Jesuit. 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 Uh, the Jesuit priest in charge of the Mother Butler Center made us um, made us welcome, but he was almost the only white who um, who showed any gratitude for the help we gave the town during the flood. Tensions were running high and rapid in late 1972. We discovered that here had been an acceleration of racist ugliness involving crude sexual harassment of Indian women, as well as a number of of incidents in which old in which older American Indians had been abused and subjugated to discrimination. I declared a freeze on the city. I announced that we would shut down the whole business district district because of the maltreatment um, in, in, inflicted daily upon Indian people there. We had first tried to wake up the white of um, officials and businessmen in a peaceful, non-confrontational way. We invited government officials in, um, to an AIM conference, men from the BIA, from the Justice Department, and from the other um, Office for Economic Opportunity, but they did not take our complaints seriously. We wanted to set up a, a meditation board where both whites and and Indians could honestly talk about our, our respective problems, work to lessen the tensions between us, and to have a show of goodwill, but we got nowhere. We felt pushed um, into confrontation. We had little choice but to confront Rapid's problems. Rapid's white citizens looked upon us as terrorists. They locked, um, they locked themselves into their homes and drove around in their pickup trucks with loaded rifles and shotguns in gun rocks. Not surprising. We followed through with our threat to shut down the business district. Our people picked in front of establishments such as, Nor uh, such as Northwestern Bell Telephone, Black Hills Power, and Light, Kmart, um, Piggly Wiggly, 
Dunkin' Donuts, First National Bank, um, Safeway, the Coca-Cola bottling plant, Ellsworth Air Force Base, and the local BIA office. In other words, we shut down every single commercial and government establishment of any size in Rapid City. God damn, hell yeah. Rem- um, um, resentment too long suppressed against um, the way we had always been treated finally boiled over. Fights started at, started in a frontier bar, the stockman's bar, and other places where Indians had often been beaten up or or abused. In the in the Bronco Bar, which had a sign in the window warning, quote unquote, Indians enter at their own risk, a white rancher flung a glass of whiskey into the face of an Indian. Pandemonium broke out. Some of our young women had exchanged their had exchanged their bu- their buckskin. Mm, Moccasins, moccasins, uh, moccasins for quote unquote shit kickers, boots with steel tip toes, and use them on the shins of white uh, opponents. Hell, fuck yeah. Um, fights were breaking out everywhere inside saloons and outside in the street. Police went, went, went amok, busting heads with their nightsticks, looking for anyone who looked like an Indian. Mary Ellen Moore, in the ninth month of pregnancy, was beaten to the floor inside the frontier bar and defended herself with a broken ashtray. About 200 AIM people were arrested and carted off to the old vermin-infested um, Pennington County Jail. There, there weren't enough paddy wagons to transport them all, so the mayor ordered a fire truck and an old Greyhound bus to take the overflow. Crow Dog let a large group of Indians who joined who joined hands and danced in a line in a line that, snaking around the jail, all the while singing war songs to the beat of the drums. When the clashes between whites and Indians start to get out of hand. Bruce and I set up a demilitarized zone. We were fighting and negotiating at the same time with with the town's most prominent citizens, and we were actually getting some of our demands addressed. A racist city official, however, countered by passing um, inflammatory resolutions against the Indian against the Indian disturbs of the peace at Pine Ridge. Dickie Wilson panicked and asked the government to for reinforcements when he heard about what was going on in Rapid City. He got them. 80 U.S. Marshals with fi- with 50 caliber machine guns, which were as yet kept out of sight. All in all, our actions at the time improved the situation for the Indians of Rapid. Tension in nearby towns, however, was reaching the breaking point. We were immediately faced by a new challenge. There was a town named Buffalo Gap in the eastern foothills of the Black Hills. It got its name from its location at in an opening in the hills in the old days buffalo herds made a trail through this gap to reach the other prairie buffalo gap was not much of a town a bank a liquor store a post office a tiny church and two saloons that's about all the place looked looked like scenery from, from a cheap western movie on weekends the bars were crowded with white ranchers and cow hands from her Hermosa, Custer, and Hot Springs. Buffalo Gap was 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 white man's country. On Saturday, January twentieth, nineteen seventy four, one of the two saloons, Bill's Bar, was crammed with customers. Among them were were Wesley Bat Bad Hartbull and Oglala, his mother Sarah, Sarah's friend Robert High Eagle, and a white gas um, station attendant named Daryl Schmitz. On several occasions, Schmitz had proclaimed loudly. One day I'll get myself an in engine, in June, mm-hmm. yeah. Engine. Weasley had been war had been warned by the owner of the bar not to come anymore. You are not welcome here. He had been told he, he had been told, but he came anyway. Weasley was not easily intimidated. He was a tough. He, he was tough. Schmitz, drunk as usual, cursed we um Weasley. They had words. Schmitz finally left, shouting, I'll kill that son of a bitch. The next day, Weasley, uh, Weasley Bad Heart, 
Harpal was found dying in front of Bill's bar with a knife struck in his chest. Fucking hell. Schmitz had stabbed him seven times. Weasley died on the way to the hospital in Hot Springs. There were witnesses to the stabbing. Even the, even the bartender said Schmitz had attacked Weasley without, without provocation. <laughs> Sarah and Heigl had seen Schmitz leave oh, the yeah. bar. Sorry, what? I'm sorry. I got a mute. It's fine. Sarah and High Eagle had seen Schmitz leave the bar with the knife in his hand. Schmitz, who admitted killing Bad Hartbull, was arrested and taken to Custer, the country seat. He was charged with second-degree manslaughter, the lowest charge possible in a case of homicide. He was released immediately on bail and never spent a single hour in jail. While our people were still putting putting the freeze on the white business, businesses of Rapid, I was in Salt Lake City as field director of AIM, Organi organizing an anti-alcoholism program. On January 24th, Ron Petit, who had gone up to Rapid City to, to do some investigating, called and told me what he knew about the Weasley Bad Heart Bull case. He said this was this was a case AIM should become involved in. I immediately flew to Rapid City and joined Ron and Herb Petit. Sorry, Herb Paulus to see what, what we could do. I also got Raymond, I don't know how to pronounce that, Raymond Ra, Ro, Robadu, our Indian lawyer, to come. Raymond went to Bill's bar to talk to the bartender and two other witnesses. They were all willing to, to testify that they had heard Schmidt say he would get the red son of a bitch. It's, it really shook me up to see the same old bullshit, a charge of second-degree manslaughter when it should have been a murder in the first-degree charge. He, um, we knew from experience that on the lesser charge, Schmidt would not do any would not do any time at all. We asked Weasley, we asked Weasley's mother, Sarah, whether we should continue to pursue the case. She gave us her permission. I asked Raymond to talk to the to the county attorney, the South Dakota version of a district um attorney. Raymond wanted to file a charge of murder against Schmitz, but county attorney Ho Hobart Gates flatly refused to change the, the indictment. We knew it, it would take a confrontation to possibly change change his mind. There were other matters to be dealt with at the same time. Even before Weasley Bad Heart Bull was stabbed, a date had been set for um, for further hearings on civil rights violations in Rapid City, Pennington County, and the state of South Dakota. These hearings had been set for February 3, for, for, for February 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Many Indians from several states came to testify. As soon as these hearings were over, we decided to go to Custer, where Daryl Schmitz would be arranged. We notified the court, the town's officials, and the police that we were coming so, so as not to take them by surprise. I told the mayor, the state attorney, and the sheriff that about four or five um, carloads of Indians would arrive on, on February 6th. They agreed to meet with us on, on a date at 9 a.m. inside the old courthouse. Custer officials, however, said they would admit only five only five of us. The group chose to send Leonard Crowdog, Russell Means, Raymond R Robidoux, Sarah Bad Heart Bull and me. We told the people who had participated in the civil rights hearings, tomorrow we are going to Custer to have Schmitz charged with a murder and to show support to the Bad Heart Bull family. If any of you want to come along as a gesture of solidarity, then join us. On the morning of February 6th, we had gathered at the Mother Butler Center. I had thought I had thought that a few cars at, and at most 50 or 60 people would come. Waiting for us instead were more than 30 cars and over 200 people. In the early morning, we formed a wide circle. Crow Dog began smudging everybody with sage and fanning them off. I knew we had to be prepared for any, for, um, for any eventuality. Rumors were flying about a SWAT team waiting to attack our people. In Custer, there would be fear and paranoia on both sides of the fence. I told everyone there was a good chance we would we would be met with armed resistance, but just from looking at them, I knew we were we were ready. I sensed a real strength in our eager young people and felt good about them. They were like young colts, um, colts hard 
to um to rain in. On the way to Kassar, we ran into into a blizzard that made driving hazardous. We set out into two caravans of fifteen cars each, one led by Roos and the other by me. I could be I, I I could hear the honking behind me. Let's go! I was waving cars on, something getting out of one and into another, G um, guiding them through the snow and making sure everybody was safe on the fifty mile journey from Rapid to Custer. We finally arrived in Custer at about one thirty p.m. I a few hours late due to the terrible weather. Custer is a is a cow town with some uh, with some two thousand inhabitants. During the summer, it is a tourist trap, swar um, swarming with thousands of, of visitors en route to to the Black Hills. Visitors entering the town are greeted by a large billboard with the words "Welcome to Custer." Um, welcome to Custer, the town with with the gun smoke flavor. Another sign proclaims Custer, home of the Flintstones. Man, Main Street is Main Street is lined with with motels, bars, cheap eater, um, cheap um, eateries, advertising Buffalo Burger, um, Buffalo Burgers, um, bo boutiques, Indian Indian curio shops selling fake. Same tomahawks made in Hong Kong, rock shops with, with phony ancient arrowheads, and models of Mount Rushmore in a dozen sizes. We went at once to the, to the courthouse, an old building of red brick with a white wooden porch. When we, were, when we got there, our meeting with country attorney Gates was a disaster. He greeted us with an angry, you're late, you're supposed to be here at nine. He seemed to be unaware of the blizzard and poor visibility that had slowed us to a crawl. We for, at first, he refused to let any of us in, into the courthouse. Finally, he agreed to let only four of us in besides Ra 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 Raymond um, Ru Ru um, Ru Rubidoux. Rubidoux. Sorry, Rabadou. Our lawyer, Leonard Crowdog, our, our medicine man, Russell Means, Dave um, Hill, and me. He refused to allow Sarah Badheart Bull, the mother of the murdered man, to enter. She had to stay outside on the porch steps in spite of the snow. Fucking hell. Our efforts to change Gates' mind what um mind about Sarah failed. We asked him if the rest of our people could come in. There was a hearing room large enough to hold over a hundred people. He said no. Raymond pleaded, There are women and children outside in the cold. It's snowing hard. Gates still refused. He ordered Sheriff Ernest um, Pepin and Deputy um, Bill Rice to guard the, the double door against any Indians trying to enter. We told Gates that we want that we wanted to change to charge against Schmitz against um uh, sorry. We told Gates that we wanted to cha um, charge against Schmitz changed um to an ind indictment for murder. Gates told us, I will prosecute this manslaughter case to the fullest extent. I said, you know it was murder. He replied, I do not. Raymond tried to show Gates evidence he had gathered from eyewitnesses to the killing. Gates said, I already have all the evidence I need. It was just a it was just a barroom brawl. I told him, in a barroom brawl, you get a bloody nose, but here you have a dead body. That's murder. No, he kept insisting. It was just a brawl. The fucking... The fucking cognitive dissonance, fucking hell. I argued with him. Russ argued with him. We got nowhere. We were unable to contain our anger. There was a lot of hollering and yelling at both sides. Totally frustrated, Roos stormed out of the room and went outside. In a few words, he informed the crowd what was going on inside. The people responded with a deep, angry growl. Roos mentioned Sarah to come with him into the building. They... They were refused entry by the state police. The crowd rushed up up the porch steps and tried to break the doors down. They succeeded, but were met by 50 state troopers in full riot gear with helmets and, um, and face um, visors. Every trooper carried a gun and an extra long nightstick. Fighting broke out immediately, both inside and outside the building, on the porch in front of the courthouse, on the steps, and on on Mount R Rushmore Road, there were pitched battling. There were pitched battling going on all over the place. Sarah Bad Heart Bull, um, who still persisted in her efforts to enter the building, was thrown down the steps. A trooper came from her behind 
behind her and put a nightstick across her throat. Using full force with both of his, of his hands, he almost choked her to death. Inside the courthouse, I had to defend myself against a trooper coming at me with a three-foot club aimed at my head. I hit him in the arm, breaking his, his wristwatch, but not, but not the bone. Suddenly, a tear gas can canister came flying through the air. In no time, the whole building was a cloud of tear gas. The state police were, were hurling the canisters at us to drive us out of the building. They chucked the canisters at the crowd in front of the building, but our people just threw them back in, into the courthouse. There was there was pandemonium in the hallways. The situation was totally out of control. Night six clashed with, 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 with shared legs and whatever our people could get their hands on. Tear gas canisters were met by were sorry, I lost. Tear gas canisters were met by rocks and loose bricks. The air inside the courthouse became unbearable. It was nearly impossible to breathe or see. My eyes were pouring water and my face and lungs seemed to be on fire. I tried to open a window that was that was stuck, then grabbed a chair and smashed it through the glass. I stuck my head out the window and gulped the fresh air, the fresh cold air. Crow Dog was the first to leap out of the window. It was about a six foot drop. I came out after him. People later told me I was I was grinning, shouting, "I fo I follow my spiritual leader." Hell yeah! <laughs> fighting fighting continued on the street for the rest of the afternoon. The state police were no longer armed with only handguns and nightsticks, as if by magic they appeared carrying rifles and shotguns. Reinforcements were coming in a in a steady pace. Fire firemen and men from the department of the ga of the game fish uh. Department of Game, Fish, and Parks Rangers from, from Custer State Park and some ordinary white citizens were, were, were deputized to help the state troopers subdue us. The young Oglala ran up the steps of the courthouse with two, with two, with two big, heavy cans of gasoline he had taken from Dave's um, um, Texaco? Texaco. Correct. Texaco Station um, opposite the courthouse. He sloshed the gas all over the steps and, um, and and the porch. There were puddles of gasoline everywhere. Another young man ran up with a box of matches and tried to ignite the gas. The crowd roared, do it, do it, do it, aim, do it. Some women and girls made, made a spine-tingling, high-pitched, brave heart cry, which sent chills through the crowd. One of the state troopers pointed his gun at the young man with the matches screaming, if you try to fire... the if you if you set the if you try to set fire to this, I'll shoot. I'll shoot to kill. He paid the trooper no mind. Again and again, he tried to light a match, but the wind blew um them all out. The trooper kept screaming, "I'll shoot to kill!" So help me God. A girl ran onto the porch, holding a fl a flicking candle, shielding from the wind by her hand. The state trooper pointed their guns at her too, but that did not deter her her. The snowstorm blew our, out our candle as well. Finally, another young man ran up with with two burning flares, the kind you set on the road as a warning after an accident. I guess he got them from, from the gas station. Again, the crowd shouted to in unison, do it, do it, do it, man, do it, aim, aim, aim. He threw the first flare, but it, it fell short. The closer he got closer and threw the second flare. It landed in the middle of the biggest puddle of gasoline, and in a fraction of a second, the whole front of the courthouse, porch, steps, and wooden fence became a sea of flames. A huge war cry, um, a huge war cry went up from the crowd. The sign, Welcome to Custer, the town with the gunsmoke flavor, was ablaze. <laughs> Ironic. Um the long house chamber of commerce building was soon torched as it burned um as it burned um it sent up a huge shower of glowing red sparks that obliterated everything else from sight a fire a fire truck arrived to try to save the chamber of uh, of of com of commerce building, Indians threw rocks, pipe bottle, pop bottles, beer cans, and whatever else they could to find they could find at the firearm who who backed off. In no time, there was nothing left of the wooden structure but a heap of black ashes mingling with 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 with, with the falling snow. 
One of our women got too close to the flames of the courthouse porch and her clothes caught fire. Friends um, rolled her in the snow to put on, out the fire. Two police cars were torched and gutted. Some Somebody tried to set fire at Dave's ta Taxico station, but luckily did not su succeed. The fighting continued. Police were, were clubbing down Indians right and left. There was blood in the snow. Roos had been beaten to the ground and was sitting, dazed on the lowest of the courthouse steps, handcuffed with two of his arms badly hurt. He was guarded by the smirking sheriff in his cowboy hat. Troop troopers gr dragged a beautiful young young girl by her feet throughout the snow and, and and in the process, ripped her blouse off so that above the waist, she um she wore nothing except her bra. Fucking disgusting. Indians were lying face down in the snow, held there by two or three troopers searching and handcuffing um each of them. Out of nowhere, a big tanker truck full of gasoline appeared, per perhaps on the way to Dave's Taxico. The driver had driven almost to the courthouse, then stopped when he suddenly realized that he had landed in the middle of a riot surrounded by flames. He panicked. He just sat there, bug-eyed and paralyzed. I thought, "Oh no! If the truck catches fire, it will blow up. It will blow up, and everyone will will, will be burned to death." Indian screamed at the driver, "Move! Get get your ass out of here!" I ran to the, to the truck to tell the driver to leave. He only, he only he only stammered, "What's going on? What's happening?" I jumped on the driver's side of the truck, pushed him over, and grabbed the wheel. I asked, "How do you operate this thing?" But I could not. I could not. I but I could get no answer out of him. I finally got the, the truck into gear. For a moment, I thought of driving the truck close to the courthouse to set the whole building on fire, but I, I, ho I got hold of myself. I backed, to the I backed the truck out of the out of the danger area. I could see the two Indians still, st um, still stood, waving a red a aim banner and a four di direction flag of the four, si of the four sacred colors. 22 people were arrested that day, 19 Indians, two whites, and, and one black person. Among those taken to jail were Sarah Bad Harbaugh, the mother of the murdered man, and, um, and Russell Means. I was arrested and charged later. A deputy told Roos, we were waiting for your sons. We were waiting for you sons of bitches. You were looking for trouble and got it. Roos told him, if we had wanted a riot, we, we would not have brought our women and children. And children. Sarah Bad Harbaugh was, was was tried for riot with arson. She was sentenced to one to five years and actually served five months in pr in prison. Her son's murder was acquitted by by an all white jury, and he did not serve a single day in jail. Fucking disgusting. Wow. That is disgusting. And it's going to show you. It is just. Baby, it, it is Sorry, it's very disgusting, man. You know, well, I mean, that's that's what you call justice. <laughs> yep, that's 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 Which justice really in this justice. fucking country, where yeah. a non-white person can get where where a non-white person can get murdered. It, um, can get murdered. That what, what happened to, to 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 that person? What happened to Weasley is literally is is literally it's ba it's literally what happened to um to um to um to George Floyd. Literally the same kid, literally the same thing was killed out in the open and barely got and barely got any charge. It's just fucking disgusting. You know, one of the things that that struck me from the very beginning of your of your reading was the uh, word goon squad. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I've experienced a lot of goon squads in my life, you know, really? when I was when I was in prison. Every time I used to, every time I used to do some organizing, or or, or the or, or the group was getting larger, they would pick me up, scramble, scramble, scramble me with a few others, and put us up in in, in segregation, and and beat us up. I would, they would come to my cell, man, open it up, and go in there five or six of them, and I mean they were they were big gorillas, man, <laughs> you Jesus. know. And, and, and I mean, weighing close to 300 pounds, man. And here I had this tiny little kid, <laughs> you know. So uh, it was a, you know, goon squad is, is, is a common word that is utilized by brothers and sisters in prison when they're talking about the police. They call them goon squads. Yeah, it's us. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. 
Oh no, this is a, a depiction of what's still continuing to going on with pro police brutality uh, uh, across the nation. Uh, yep. These goo squads, or now even police departments have their own gangs. Yeah. Uh, call them rubber cops. Th yeah, they, they bring- they Call them rubber cops, yeah. <laughs> or pseudo cops. So, so even though this is a reading from the early 70s, it's still depicted in today's time and, and frame. Yep. Yeah, that changed. Nothing so, has changed. Nothing has changed. A anything, everything has just gotten worse. Nothing has changed. It got so, worse. <laughs> no, that's why we have to continue to stay strong. Yeah, that's why definitely. we definitely have to continue to unite. That's why we definitely have to face and stand up to these oppressors because oh, we yeah. are not going to tolerate their bullshit anymore. This, no, is, yeah. this is already enough is enough. And and it, and it happens. You can see, I don't watch the news, but I, I get bits and pieces from uh, uh, from pe people. Um, it continues to happen this week, last week. It's going to happen next week. Well, what are we going to do to stand up and fight against that? And so as a revolutionary study group, this is where we're at. And I'll be quiet because... Ooh, I'm very adamant. Like, ooh, and as okay. you're talking now, it may be happening somewhere in, in this country. Somewhere in this country right now, somebody okay. getting beat right up now. or hurt. Oh, right yeah. now. As Indeed. we talk. Indeed. Um, it's just one thing that I want to point out of this reading was um was the presence of that reservation. What what, what was it, what was what was his fucking name again? I forgot. I forgot, but <laughs> Don Wilson. Um, so oh, we're talking I'm about sorry. Dick Wilson. Dick yeah, Wilson. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, who, who, Dick. Led, who led uh, the council to the tribal peoples, but he was kind of whitewashed at the time. He was a white supremacist. And yeah, and he like hired it. a goon squad yep. of over uh, no. 70 peoples. And they oppressed. He was just like a he was just like a goon to the oppressors that yep. oppressed the natives there in Pine Ridge in that er early area uh, era of uh, the 70s. Yep. And they were standing it up, but they needed the support of AIM, which is one of the collective organizations that we work with mm -hmm. um, because it takes force to fight force. It takes mm -hmm. a gun to fight a gun battle. Exactly. So if you're gonna you know, come with a gun, we're gonna come right back at you with the gun, indeed. and that's that. that the, even today, in today's time, like, what are we gonna do about all this police brutality that's going on? Like the Black revolution in a good format. We're gonna follow them, sons of bitches. Exactly. We're gonna follow them and make sure that they don't continue oppressing the people. And, and making false arrests and, uh -huh. and, and pulling people over for little menial things as a, a outdated tag or yep. a, a broken blinker. They still continue to, to face that. I mean, uh, we all live in different uh, cities, but uh, yep. we still facing the same shit today. And Nothing we has changed. definitely have to stand strong. We definitely have to stand together to make change. And it's going to take a collective unit of all of our nationalities. Say it, uh, whatever nationality you come from. But if we are tired of the oppression, we are tired of the oppression. And together, yeah, exactly. collectively, we can be strong and make a presence to stop. Or it, maybe we might never stop it. Maybe not in our generation. But what about of our next seven generations? What about of exactly. our kids and our grandkids? What are we going to do about it today? This exactly. is this is why I get so adamant and so strong about speaking when we continue to face this oppression. And then this this just uh, on Pine Ridge. I've been to Pine Ridge. It's very oppressed. It's like a third world country. It's sad. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and it's, uh, I mean, I, I went there last year and I seen it. Um, like, it's disgusting. Really, man. what's going on? I can't like, imagine. We, ha we have to support all our comrades within the, uh, the big cities, the suburbs, 
the country or the ranches or the barrios or however you deem to term it, uh, we have to continue to support all of us because what happens in our communities affect all of us as a collective whole. Oh, yeah. one, one of the things sidewalks or no sidewalks. That's all. Go ahead, yep. comment. No, I was going to say that one of the things that's so encouraging about the Second Rainbow Coalition is we found the uh, the resonance. I mean, I mean, we found the people who who were waiting for this message, right? Mm -hmm. That this is a this message of unity is not some abstract thing. It's not some kind of do good or liberal thing. This is a, this message of unity people recognize is a necessity. If all of us are going to survive, uh, if one of us is going to survive, it's going to mean all of us uniting. And that, yep. that, that unity has um, never been possible before in the history because they were always able to, to uh, buy off a section. But now, uh, it's like a dream I had last night where the, everybody was in, uh, in a homeless shelter waiting to be fed. And the, I looked around and they were all white. It's like the, the white working classes are falling through the cracks in increasing numbers. You see it in the homeless. You see it everywhere in Chicago and um, in Indiana where the White Panthers are. They're, they're there's ragged ass poverty stricken places all throughout the Midwest, all throughout the South. And so the possibility of unity uh, is a, stronger is stronger because we're objectively united economically and the, there's no hope for any of us under capitalism. Capitalism yep. don't have room for us no more. We're nothing to them. And so yep. we have to we have to survive. And just like this uh, slaves uh, who were brought here from Africa, they, they trashed the plantations and they went out into the woods and they formed you know, communities Community. out there, uh, maroon communities. They, we're going to have to do all sorts of different ways, but we have a strong central message that can unite us and it doesn't matter in a way where we are because we're all put on the same playbook. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said, um, be, um, beautifully said, comrade. You know, let, let, uh, let me say, let me say this: oppression. You know, like I always talk in my videos, right? Oppression breeds resistance, mm -hmm. and we need to know that the more we are oppressed and our people are oppressed, the more they are awakening. To the fact that they are about the oppression, and the more they are beginning to resist, resist doesn't necessarily mean violence. It right. can mean unification. You know, exactly. it can mean you know? organization. It could mean organization. You know, yep. that's what resistance can mean for various in various ways. See, we look at resistance like, wow, man, you know, you got we got to fight. No, it doesn't have to fight with this, but you can fight with this with your mind. Exactly. You know, it's and both. that's where. It's that's where resistance starts, right here in the mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh, so, as always, as um, as comrade, uh, as comrade Che, when um, what um, when said to paraphrase what he said, you know, um, that love that we have for humanity will will be, will be brought into concrete acts, you know, because that's what we need right now more than ever, you know, we need to provide for our communities and pit and build self-sufficiency within our communities if any of us are going to actually survive and not just survive, but thrive. And the only way we're gonna thrive, the only way we're actually gonna be able to live the possibility of living a decent life, and if not for us, for our next generation, is by having a new system with a new, so, um, with, a, with a new, with, um, with a new um, um, means of, with a new means of production and social relations with a new socioeconomic system. And um, I just want to specifically br um, bring up um, how, um, how the president of that, um, of that, um, of that reservation, um, Dick something, I forgot his last name. It just goes to show you how anyone can be a white supremacist, you know, regardless if you're black, indigenous, Asian, 
regardless of what you're of what, of what ethnicity you are, anyone in any anyone can be a white supremacist, you know? Anyone. Yeah. And it just goes to show you how um how even among non-white groups, how the bourgeois will um will um will um will whitewash and um will whitewash and use will you um will use um will whitewash and use black people or indigenous people and use them to and 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 use them to tear down to um to build up the vision and to engage in opportunism and revisionism within their own movements within their own communities you know they'll mm-hmm. use their own people they'll use their own people against them and that right there that's the shit that we that that we, that we need to look out for because you know the last people the last person you would expect to betray you is your own you know which is why we always have to be careful and we always have to be critical and, and that right there just, just goes to show you that anyone could be a white supremacist and it's through you know having a mass line and a cultural and a cultural revolution that will enable us to um to combat the forces of reaction whether they come in the form of guns or whether they come in the form of um, of phonies, of LARPers, of people who claim to be revolutionaries when in actuality they only mean to tear down and revise um, pr- um, our praxis and um, in, uh, in our fundamentals. And uh, yeah, that's how I want to say. Yes, um, you know, uh, the biggest tool we have is that hole we have between our nose and our chin, which is our <laughs> mouth. Yep, yep. That can... That is our biggest weapon. Um, and, and of course, when we're talking about a revolution and we're talking about uh, strength and unity, uh, our biggest weapon is our mouth. And But yep. we've got to remember that tongue is a double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. That tongue can make change or it could regress, create division. Mm-hmm. So definitely, we have to definitely talk about positive things we definitely have to watch what we say, especially as we get stronger in strength uh, uh, amongst adversaries, because we have many of them. Uh, we have to be careful what we say, yep. because the tongue is the strongest tool or weapon that we have uh, to make radical change. Yep. And not not to not to defer from boots on the ground or Practice. soldiering up. Uh, Because, like I mentioned earlier, it takes a gun to fight a gun. We're facing oppressors that don't use their... They they use their tongue, but they're coming at us with other tactics. They're coming at us with weapons, whether it be, like they mentioned earlier, tear gas Mm -hmm. or, 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 um, uh, what do you call it, armor-piercing bullets. Um, They're not coming at us. They're not playing fair. So. When you when you come into play at the game, what's fair nowadays? Uh, especially gun. nowadays, like by any means necessary, we have to protect us, our families, our communities, and the peoples in general. And we mm-hmm. got to do that by any means necessary. So stand mm-hmm. up, stay strong, comrades, because what is affecting our communities is affecting all our communities. And this That's is exactly. where we're going to make change. And with Indeed. that being said, um, anyone else want to uh, uh, enter on that? And I, I don't know if we have Comrade Phil uh, still on here because he we don't he, have him. He left, unfortunately. He left. Oh, yep. oh, he he's pretty good. He's pretty good at making adversary change because he's kind of one of those. Uh, uh, what do you call those? Uh, watch the cops or police the cops? Where he does. I doc- think so. <laughs> he does documentaries on that. Uh, um, because that's that's our biggest adversary right now uh, yep. that we hear on the news, but it's not just the cops; it's the Proud Boys, it's it's all kinds of other uh, since that like uh, President Trump, uh, Trump or, or Chump uh, <laughs> came out. Uh, so many white supremacy units and organizations that came out. Not even the police departments have their own gangs in different. Uh, in different sectors of the nation. Um, we definitely, we got to pay attention to all this. And we could definitely got to pay attention to COINTELPRO because oh, it was existed back in the days and it still existed today. Um, and remember, our enemies 
look just like us, talk just like us, wow. act just like us, act just like us, but be be mindful, be diligent, uh, yep. do your diligent work on finding out who's who when you're working with them, because you can get into like, say, oh, you get invited to a rally or to an organization like, hey, we're going to have burn the flag day on 4th of July. Uh huh. Oh, well, who's actually going to be there? Um, what's really going to go on? Are we setting ourselves up to be uh, martyrs and targets when we have so much other work to do also? Um, definitely, definitely. We got to we definitely got to pay attention to everything that we are applying ourselves to and that we continue to do because it is a struggle. It wouldn't be oh, called yeah. a struggle if we weren't suffering in the struggle. But stay strong, comments. And well, that's yeah, that's all. If anybody else wants to say something, I I, I did Go want ahead. to say, I uh, I just finished this book that was written uh, during the um, early 1900s during the uh -huh. Russian Revolution. Um, it was called uh, "The Life of a Useless Man," and it's about this guy that they. Uh, brought into the spy network. He didn't want to be a spy, but they had something on him. They uh, they tortured him and they said, if you don't work for us, we're going to kill you and we're going to, you know, do it slow. And, and that kind of thing uh, actually happened. So the whole thing was based on fact. So they had a tremendous spy network in Russia working for the czar. And but at a certain point, the the uh, the ideas of revolution had so thoroughly penetrated that country that they could no longer suppress it. The, nothing yep. would work. No spies would work. It didn't matter if you were spying because everybody you were were in contact with was a revolutionary. Yep. And so that you know the the people who were who, who were doing that dirty work, all of a sudden they said, we have to, we have to look out, they're going to kill us, you know, and so they, you know, they began to scatter like cockroaches and stuff. And we're, we're living in a period when the people have not become ignited yet. And we'd be stupid to think that they are. At Indeed. this point, we need to ignite them with these new ideas because they're, they have no hope for the future. Once they start to realize that, then they're looking for an alternative. And that's where we can bring, bring this uh, idea of a, a different society to them. And then uh -huh. they will, they'll, the fire will be set. The, like Mao Zedong said, a single spark will start a prairie fire. And that's, yep. that's what time it is. But the mistake that some revolutionaries make is to say, this is the moment. And yeah. when it's not, you really have to be scientific, especially now, because they're relying more and more on, um, you know, they can put words in anybody's mouth. So literally, you're going to, you could be projected out into the world saying mm -hmm. the most terrible things. It'll look like your mouth and the words will sound like your words. Yep, I mean, this exactly. is how so sophisticated it is. So we have to keep on message, be clear, point the way out and not get way out on a limb. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> our success depends on being able to measure and judge and analyze exactly where we are. Indeed. Uh, beautifully said, comrade. And, you know, um, I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to say that, you know, um, um, specifically, I wanted to add on what you said about our analysis, you know, because you're 100% spot on, you know, as the state, you know, with anything regarding class struggle and the materialistic conditions, it's never static. It's never, it's never going to stand still. It's, all, it's always moving. And as materialistic conditions change and as, and as the bourgeois use the, the, um, the state and their tools of oppression uh, continue, to, continue to advance to, um, to oppress us 
and subjugate us better, our tools of liberation have to also advance to reach an equilibrium to face off against their tools of oppression. That means we gotta use the same guns as they do. We gotta use the same. We gotta use um. We gotta use um. We gotta um. We, we gotta we gotta use the same guns as they do. We gotta use um. We gotta combat ourselves and militarize ourselves if we want to see change. And you know, and when it comes to our analysis, our analysis cannot be based on dogmatic bullshit. On um, less um um ca- cannot be based on dogmatism but it also cannot be based on revisionist bourgeois thought. It has to be based on a scientific and Marxist analysis of our internal contradictions, the relation between said contradictions, how, how those contradictions affect our materialistic conditions and how to analyze ta- that struggle within our society and move it forward through praxis, through applying that theory into action and then and then adapting that theory to specifically meet our materialistic conditions and how revolution will happen the east coast won't be the same as how revolution will happen the west coast and how revolution will happen in florida won't be the same as how revolution will happen in new york and so on and so forth each one of our communities has specific materialistic needs that need to be met and the moment that they are met the moment the vanguard party has has made that connection with the masses the moment they the moment the moment they they, they see that, that 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 a better future is possible they will fall in line with the ideological and political line of the party they will engage in dialectical materialism they will engage in organization and class agitation and the way we make that connection with the masses the way we the way um the way the way we develop the spearhead and the body of of the spear is through mass line. It's through cultural revolution. It's through cra- grassroots and providing for our community, so that way they can see that a the party loves the people, and b if the bar if the party loves the people, the and shows that they love the people, the people will love the party, and if the people love the party, the people will use the party as a way of or- of organizing. Because after all, the party is for the people, to the people, by the people, and uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the flicker of light has not been distinguished. Yep, but it's been it a not. flicker of light. All we have yeah. to do is illuminate the light to mm-hmm. bring it to the masses. Whether it's us as individuals bringing fuel to the fire to illuminate the light so that others can see it across the board, um, that's what we can do as beneficial uh, revolutionary soldiers across. Uh, uh, the nation and across humanity. But exactly. um, we have a lot of the movements have been dormant yep. yeah. for, 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 uh, for a couple of uh, a decades. Also, um, also um, not, not to interrupt you, um, Comrade Joe, but I just want to say to you and everyone that, I mean, you know, we, uh, we, don't, we, we don't want the, 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 the recording to, to last too long. Oh. <laughs> I'm yeah, no, no, I agree with that. But let 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 us stay strong. Let us keep on becoming the fuel to the to the to the lamp to enlighten mm-hmm. others. Let us not let us not lose that fuel, and uh, let us share whatever fuel and knowledge we have to continuing to keep that light flickered or that strength flickered uh, and become a big beam. Uh, let us keep on moving strong. And yes, it is getting late. I think it's seven thirty. Yeah, right. Okay, good. Yeah, it is nine thirty. Um. Okay. So, I'm going to if any if um well um if anyone has has anything to say, you you can do so. But I'm going to stop the recording. Um. So that way um so that way it doesn't last too long. I'm going to stop it right. Um.